in a time before Dark Souls, before Demon Souls, but a bit after Kingsfield, the digital warlocks known as From Software created a mysterious game cursed with not being very well known. The game, you might ask? Its name was Eternal Ring, and in the year 2021, one gamer will befall its seductive call and bring it to light. Ah, what a magnificent day. You know, it's so perfect that I think I'll play on my PS5. Now, what to play? The PS5 has so many options. I guess it will have to be Demon Souls. But I wonder. What came before it all? For Dark Souls? For Demon Souls? Eternal Ring? Oh, I'm getting this urge. Let's talk about a game no one cares about. Today I would like to talk to you about From Software's cult classic Eternal Ring. A game that is criminally underrated and does not get the attention it deserves. I want you to take my hand and we'll go where no one has gone before. All the way back to the 2000s. And we will explore Eternal Ring's world. We will explore the characters. We will explore the drama, the magic, and why I think this game is so good. So buckle up and let's freaking go, my guy. From Software is a beloved company that has made waves in the gaming community. Their big name titles like Demon Souls, Bloodborne, and who could forget the Dark Souls franchise. But what they're not as well known for is the plethora of amazing games they've made. Have you ever heard of a little game called Metal Wolf Chaos? No? Well, what about Kingsfield? Not familiar with that either? What about Eternal Ring? Haven't heard of that one either? Well, buddy, strap on in, because guess what? That's what we're talking about today. Right off the bat, it drops you into the sterile white menu. Oh god, it burns! Oh god, my eyes! The only way forward is to click new game. The game starts with exposition. So I'm gonna give you guys a little clip notes. You got Solskja, you got Aldine, they're at war. Kane's the main character. He's from Solskja. His people leave him to go to an island called the Island of No Return. Some big shot Hungarian guy adopts him named Gillian or Jillian, I don't know. The Hungarian elders are bad and go over to King Ian's head. He's the king of Hungary and sends some troops to the Island of No Return. Then Jillian and Ian are sussing the elders and they find out that there's an artifact called the Eternal Ring and the elders want it. Jillian proposes Cain goes because he's not really his son. So if he dies, it's like whatever. So King Ian gives gives him a letter that he's gonna give to the troops and then they're gonna, I don't know, he's gonna aid them, get the eternal ring, give it to King Ian instead of the elders. And our first cutscene. Kane arrives on the island, heeding the advice from his Bostonian fisherman friend who tells him to deliver a ladder. You're gonna deliver that ladder. You'll be a lot better off doing it before nightfall. Best of luck to you. Hey, be careful out there. And you too, nameless fisherman friend. Safe journey home. Wait, there, there's something behind you. Well, I guess that's why they called the Island of No Return. <laughs> and game start. No tutorial, no hand holding, just you, me, and that lantern over there. Let's check our inventory. I love the look of this inventory. It's sharp not convoluted, and it just overall feels great. Hey, it even has your old RPG elements in it, like fire, water, dark, and strew. You got your levels, your HP, your MP, location, and hell, it's even got a time of the day. And uh, Kane, are you okay there, buddy? You looking a little <laughs> concerned. As for the drop downs, we have our items, we have rings, mag gems, and weapons. And it looks like we already have a small sword, all right. As for controls, they're pretty stiff and dated, but if you played Kingsfield, you'll get them instantly. Right away, I noticed something that I love. Behind the first save point, this purple looking thing that looks like it's from Mega Man Legends is a magic ring. And I love when games throw tiny little stuff on the ground and you can barely see them. And it sounds like I'm kidding and I'm being facetious, but I love that kind of thing. It really adds the immersion for me. I feel like I'm Bilbo picking up the ring in the goblin tunnels. Now, unfortunately, the ring right now is useless, but later it becomes very important. So we delve deeper into the cavern and you are experiencing to the beauty of this game. Well, okay, it looks a bit dated, but you can't tell me that your four-year-old brain would have been like, oh wow, look at him grab it. But what dangers lie ahead? I shall continue on and, oh, ha ha, my first opponent. One of us shall die here, and it won't be me. Oh yeah, now this is combat. Oh yeah, I'm gonna stab him with my sword. 
So yeah, combat is also pretty dated, but honestly, it's not that bad. The enemies sometimes react and try to dodge your attacks, but for the most part, you'll just be going in and out of their face and slapping them with your sword. Enemies also drop items. The Sahagan dropped a herb, and any FromSoft fan will know what that's for. Healing. And it also dropped a gem. More on these little buggers later. You make your way through the cavern and come out to a peaceful little village. It's this little town that you find the research team sent by the elders. You got Evan the team second, Marie the healer, Edgy guy, Dragoon, Sleeping Man, Study Man, and <laughs> Wallace. Welcome to this miserable island. <laughs> Oh, he's a bad guy. Kane speaks with Evan and Evan accepts him on the team thanks to that letter from the king, but takes your sword and puts it in inventory? Yeah, okay, Evan, I get it. Can't trust the new guy Kane here with a short sword, but you can trust a literal rat man living in the barn. <laughs> Sorry. He then has the audacity to tell you to go meet with Wallace and get a replacement weapon, which is, uh, it's a dagger. Okay, what's the point of taking away my short sword and giving me a dagger? How is a dagger less dangerous than a sword? Because one way or another, somebody's getting cut. Now to be fair to get the dagger, you need to present a note from Evan to Wallace and call me old school, but I'm a fan of manually using items instead of just it automatically working. That being said, the villagers are basically useless outside of Wallace who will sell you some things for mag gems and Marie who heals you. But asking around, you find out that the team was trying to lower the water levels of the ruins next to here. But to do so, they need to move the water into the water shrine, but no one can get far enough in to do it. So you know it's up to your boy, Kane. And just like that, you're in your very first dungeon, the water shrine. Hell yeah, finally you get to explore, fight monsters and fight crabs. And oh, more Sahagin. Monsters. Okay, well, while the inhabitants of the Water Shrine are recycled monsters, the area at least looks pretty cool. Now eventually you come to a mysterious man who does mysterious things to walls, but you can't directly interact with him, nor the chest next to him, so you have to move deeper into the Water Shrine. Eventually you find your way to that area where the mysterious man was, but he's nowhere to be found. But that chest, oh that chest, there's something special in there. Your very first ring of power, Fireball. That's right, laddies and gents. The game is about collecting rings and using said rings as spells. You can have up to 10 rings equipped at once, I assume one for each finger, five of which are offensive spells and five of which are passive spells. By using these spells, you use mana. You gain mana back by killing enemies or consuming magical rocks. <sighs> Now, the really cool thing about spells is they have a cooldown, so you can't spam them, which I think is a great feature. The better the spell, the longer the cooldown. What's more, spells aren't always good for just doing damage. In the Water Shrine, there are these doors with ice on them. You can use the Fireball Ring to melt the doors and gain access further inside the dungeon. I think this is good design because it teaches the player early on that the world around them can be affected by your spells and the answer isn't always using a key item. Once you put on that bad boy and test her out, you find the switch. So you hit it, you drain the water, and you delve deeper. Once we're deeper, we wander into this ha- uh, oh. Oh. Oh! Kane, watch out! That's right, our first boss fight. This boss fight was so impactful for me. Look at the way he moves, dodging your spells, jet skiing around. I know for a fact that if I played this as a kid, I'd be pogging left and right. Anyways, he's easy. The Chief Sahagan drops your first attribute ring, the Ring of Insight, which gives you an XP bonus, which honestly I think is a questionable design choice because typically games save these type of items for end game. After leaving the hall, you find a strange blue key and suddenly a dragon shows up. The dragon has trouble speaking, but it talks about Solshia and that Kane must seek out someone known as Lila. Well, with this information, let's head on back to HQ and tell our fellow comrades that we've succeeded in our quest. Guys, guys, look what I found at the water shrine. Eh, he had it coming. So yeah, you get back and everyone's dead. And the one responsible is this Kazuya looking ass bitch who is none other than Team Captain, AKA Study Man. There's a scene where he fights Edgy Guy and then flies away in an almost comical fashion screaming about the Eternal Ring. The Eternal Ring is mine! Mine! With a stroke of luck, Edgy Guy survives, and he starts talking about the power of the Eternal Ring, and some mumbo jumbo, I don't know. So you just kind of ignore him, and then get attacked by a werewolf, who, uh, he's, he's pretty easy to. After dispatching the werewolf, you bury your friends and head through the blue door at the back of the camp, which you have to use the blue key on. Through the door is a save point and also an odd circle. Step into it and... I shall pass down the knowledge of the ancients. Submit to me the gems and I shall bestow upon thee a ring of great power. A ring of great power? Uh, I know how this ends.
You remember that magic ring we found? And those mag gems? Well, they're used for crafting brand new magical rings. Yes, this game has a ring crafting system. You got six gems, fire, water, earth, wind, holy, and dark. You can also opt to use your magical gems at shops, but really I wouldn't bother because anything you can get at the shops, you can grind out. The crafting system works a little something like this. Use a ring plus any two to six gems to make a magical ring or any two to six gems by themselves to make an attribute ring, which boosts your magic. I think there are combinations for specific rings, but honestly, I have no clue what I'm doing. I think the way it works is the more of a specific type of attribute gem you use, the ring that is made is of that same attribute. Also, the game keeps track of each ring you've collected, but the problem is there's not enough magical rings in the game to have every single ring at the same time. So you need to repurpose your current rings to fill out your collection. With that being said, let's craft a ring. Wind cutter, huh? Sounds powerful. Can't wait to use this against my next enemy. With our new ring in hand, we delve into the ruins that the team was trying to get into, and yes, finally, my first enemy that I can try wind cutter out on. <laughs> oh, baby, this is gonna be good. Excuse me? Yeah, okay. So, uh, wind cutter was a little underwhelming, but you know what? I love it. You meet up with the mystery wall man at the center of this area, and he gives you the ring of protection to help you survive the poisonous valley? Oh no, no, not a FromSoft poison area. <laughs> Suddenly an earthquake interrupts you and Mystery Man's conversation after he tells you to go to the valley, but not to the forest, and he sets off to leave for a destination unknown. Right, valley, not forest. Got it, we're totally going to the forest first. And immediately I'm attacked by bees. But these guys don't got shit on my wind cutter. Hey, a lizard man. I wonder if they're friendly. Nope, not friendly. <laughs> okay, so the forest is no joke. Everything here wants to kill you. Turns out the only purpose of the forest is it's an optional puzzle. You shoot fireballs at these torches that raise stones, creating bridges to the other cliffs. Once the puzzle has been solved, you can roam freely getting a ring that slows down the flow of time and a ring that powers up your earth and stir stat. But this video has gone on long enough and retention is fading. What does the Valley of Poison hold for our hero Kane? Danger? Poison? Mm, find out next time on the Eternal Ring Experience. Make sure to slap that like button and win cutter the subscribe button. Or else.